part a in part a i wish to lay a vision for atmanirbhar bharat atmanirbhar bharat or atmanirbharta is not a new idea ancient india was largely self reliant and equally a business epicenter of the world atmanirbhar bharat is an expression of the 130 crore indians who have full confidence in their capabilities and skills we are already part of international groupings such as the g20 and the brics the coalition for disaster resilient fund infrastructure and the international solar alliance are realities today due to india's efforts the proposals in part a will further strengthen the sankalp of nation first doubling farmers income strong infrastructure healthy india good governance opportunities for youth education for all women empowerment and inclusive development among others additionally also on the path to fast implementation are the 13 promises we had made in the budget of 2015-16 which were to materialize during the amrit mahotsav of 2022 on the 75th year of our independence they too resonate with the vision of atmanirbharta the budget proposals for 21-22 rest on six pillars health and well-being physical and financial capital and infrastructure inclusive development for aspirational india reinvigorating human capital innovation and r&d and a sixth minimum government and maximum governance i now move to talking about the first pillar health and well-being even at the outset i would like to say that the investment on health infrastructure in this budget has increased substantially progressively as institutions absorb more we shall commit more taking a holistic approach to health we focus on strengthening three areas preventive curative and well being health systems a new new centrally sponsored scheme pm atmanirbhar swasth bharat yojana will be launched with an outlay of about 64180 crore over 6 years this will develop capacities of primary secondary and tertiary care health systems strengthen existing national institutions and create new institutions to cater to detection and cure of new and emerging diseases this will be in addition to the national health mission the main interventions under the scheme are support for over 17000 rural and 11000 urban health and wellness centers setting up integrated public health labs in all districts and 30 and 3382 block public health units in 11 states establishing criti- critical care ho- hospital blocks in 602 districts and 12 central institutions strengthening of national center for disease control its five regional branches and 20 metropolitan health surveillance units expansion of the integrated health information portal to all states and uts to connect all public health labs operationalization of 17 new public health units and strengthening of 33 existing public health units at points of entry that is at 32 airports 11 seaports and 7 land crossings setting up of 15 health emergency operation centers and two mobile hospitals and setting up of a national institution for one health 
a regional research platform for WHO, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia region office, nine biosafety level three laboratories, and four regional national institutes for virology. Nutrition. To strengthen nutritional content, delivery, outreach, and outcome, we will merge the supplementary nutrition program and the portion of beyond and launch the mission portion 2.0. We shall adopt an intensified strategy to improve nutritional outcomes across 112 aspirational districts. Universal coverage of water supply. The World Health Organization has repeatedly stressed the importance of clean water, sanitation and clean environment as a prerequisite to achieving universal health. The Jaljeevan Mission Urban will be launched. It aims at universal water supply in all 4,378 urban local bodies with 2.86 crores household tap connections as well as liquid waste management in 500 Amrit cities. It will be implemented over five years with an outlay of 2,87,000 crores. Swachh Bharat and Swast Bharat. For further Swachhata of urban India, we in intend to focus on complete fecal sludge management and wastewater treatment, source segregation of garbage, reduction in single-use plastic, reduction in air pollution by effectively managing waste from construction and demolition activities, and bioremediation of all legacy dump sites. The Urban Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 will be implemented with a total financial allocation of 1,41,678 crores over a period of five years from 2021. Clean air. To tackle the burgeoning problem of air pollution, I propose to provide an amount of 2,217 crores of rupees for 42 urban centers with a million plus population in this budget. Scrapping policy. We are separately announcing, Honorable Speaker, a voluntary vehicle scrapping policy to face out old and unfit vehicles. This will help in encouraging fuel efficient, environment friendly vehicles, thereby reducing vehicular pollution and oil import bills. Vehicle, vehicles would undergo fitness tests in automated fitness centers after 20 years in case of personal vehicles and after 15 years in case of commercial vehicles. Details of the scheme will be separately shared by the Ministry. Vaccines. The pneumococcal vaccine, a made in India product, is presently limited to only five states. It will be rolled out across the country. This will avert more than 50,000 child deaths annually. Honorable Speaker, I have provided 35,000 crores of rupees for COVID-19 vaccine in this year 21-22. I am committed to provide further funds if required. So the budget outlay for health and well-being is 2,23,846 crores in this BE 21-22 as against the BE of only 94,452 crores and it marks an increase of 137 percentage. The details of the same are at Annexure 1 of the speech.
Honorable Speaker, I now move to the second pillar, physical and financial capital and infrastructure. Atmanirbhar Bharat production-linked incentive schemes are things which I would like to pay, place an emphasis. For a $5 trillion economy, our manufacturing sector has to grow in double digits on a sustained basis. Our manufacturing companies need to become an integral part of global supply chains, possess core competence and cutting-edge technology. To achieve all of the above, PLI schemes to create manufacturing global champions for an Atmanirbhar Bharat have been announced for 13 sectors. For this, the government has committed nearly 1.97 lakh crores over five years starting this financial year. This initiative will help bring scale and size in key sectors create and nurture global champions and provide jobs to our youth. Textiles. To enable the textile industry to become globally competitive, attract large investments and boost employment generation, a scheme of mega investment textiles park will be launched in addition to the PLI schemes. This will create world-class infrastructure with plug-and-play facilities to enable create global champions in exports. Seven textile parks will be established over three years. Infrastructure. The National Infrastructure Pipeline, which I announced in December 2019, is the first of its kind whole of government exercise ever undertaken by Government of India. The NIP was launched with 6,835 projects. The project pipeline has now expanded to 7,400 projects. Around 217 projects worth Rs. 1.10 lakh crores under some key infrastructure ministries have been completed. The NIP is a specific target which this government is committed to achieving over the coming years. It will require a major increase in funding from both the government and the financial sector. In this budget, I propose to take concrete steps to do this in three ways. Firstly, by creating the institutional structures Secondly, by a big thrust on monetizing assets. And thirdly, by enhancing the share of capital expenditure in central and state budgets. Infrastructure needs long-term debt financing. A professionally managed development financial institution is necessary to act as a provider, enabler, and capitalist for infrastructure financing. Accordingly, I shall introduce a bill to set up a development financial institution.